Hello, 3D printing friends. It's time for another Monoprice Mod Mondays on the BB3D channel. Today, we're going to be paying attention to the Monoprice Maker Select Plus's X-axis belt. What am I talking about? Stick around and I'll explain. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. If the X-axis belt on your Maker Select Plus seems a little bit loose, maybe it just needs a tension. A tensioner, that is, like this handy belt tensioning device right here. I remixed this from a couple of other belt tensioners on Thingiverse to get it to work just the way I wanted. It has a screw adjuster, so you can simply adjust the belt tension by turning a screw. The stock belt tensioning system consists of a small metal spring that looks like it came out of a clothespin. We're going to remove that and replace it with this belt tensioner. But before we do that, let me show you how this part goes together. So the first thing that we need to do is install an M3 nut into the part that bolts to the carriage. I struggled a little bit with this, so I'm going to kind of speed forward through this, just so you can see the comedy of errors that I went through to get that nut installed. All right, so we finally got that nut installed. Next, we'll turn our attention to the part that holds onto the belt. Using a small cutoff piece of belt, I'll show you how to get the belt installed into the part. Fold the belt over onto itself to make a small loop, and then starting at the part where you've got it pinched, slide it down into the part. The rest of the belt should press really easily down into the part, at least to get it flush. So many of the belt tensioners that I found on Thingiverse were really hard to get the belt into. I finally found one that worked easily to get the belt in, and so I copied that part of the design and pasted it into this one. You can use a small screwdriver to poke the belt in the rest of the way if you need to. So now that you've seen how the tensioner goes together, let me show you how we got to that point. We'll start by downloading the Super Simple Belt Tensioner by Berkey93. This is the thing that contributed the most to the part that we're installing. Then we'll download the Super Simple Belt Tensioner X and Y Axis Remix by Adam Bath. It's the part that donates the channel that the belt sits in. Okay, let's go get into Tinkercad so we can do this remix. First things first, we need to change the name on this document. Super Kirkhan isn't cutting it for me. I think uh, X Belt Tensioner Remix will do the trick. All right, now let's import the parts that we're going to use for the remix. Let's go choose a file and let's find that one part that I need. It's not that one, it is, yeah, that's the one. I want the slider part. Choose and import, and there we go. Let's move that off to the side. Now let's import that other part that's got the, the loop that I need. Choose a file. It's not in here, we were just in there. It's part of this other, other design. Is this the one? Yeah, that's the right part. Okay, let's choose that and import it. All right, there we go. Let's uh, switch to the top view, and I think I want to zoom in a little bit. This, let's scoot this over. This pink part here has the loop that I want, and we're going to put that over here. So we're going to cut this out and put it over here. Okay, let's get to work on this. Let me widen the window out a little bit. Okay, so I want to start cutting away pieces of this uh, pink part because I, I don't need all of it. I really just want that channel where the belt is supposed to go. I'm going to switch this to orthographic view so that it doesn't apply a perspective to what we're looking at. And I'm also going to change the grid that is used for alignment so I can nudge these box pieces that I'm using as cutters a little more precisely. So I'm gonna get these arranged here and then I can group all three of these pieces together. And the boxes that I used as holes will cut away the parts of the design that I don't need. So what I'm left with now is just that cable or that uh, belt channel. And that's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna flip that so that it more closely matches what we want on the other side here. And I think I want to do it like that as well. That way it, uh, it hangs down 
within the part. I'm going to turn that into a hole and I'm going to bring another box in. And the reason that I turned that into a hole is because I want to cut its shape out of the box. So let me get these lined up on that corner. And then I can group them together. Oh, hang on a second. Let me make that a little smaller. There we go. And I think that's about right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to turn that back into a solid so that when I group these together, the part with the belt channel gets cut out of this box. And I'll turn that into a hole so we can look at it a little, a little easier. We can kind of see through it. And I see a little issue. I need to shave a little bit more off of the front of this box on the left side. So we'll get another, uh, excuse me, just a second. How high is that? Okay, 10 centimeters. All right, so I'm gonna get another box out here as a hole, and I'm gonna turn our, what's gonna be our cutting tool back into a solid. So we'll drop this down to 10 centimeters, or 10 millimeters, I mean, so that we can shave the front of this off. So we've got that to where it, it's gonna cut just the front of that off. Make sure we don't cut into the loop. And I think we're clear. All right. Yeah, that looks good. So let me highlight those and group them together. And that cuts the, the bit off of that that we didn't need. I want to cut the top of this box off as well. So I'm going to take another uh, whole box and I'm going to... I don't need to change the height of it. I do need to change how high above the work plane it is, so I'll set that to 10 centimeters so that it matches our other, our other part. We'll slide that over and group those together. And now we're getting closer to what I need. I've got that one little tail that I need to cut off of there, so one more box as a cutter. Group those together. And there we go. That is looking good. All right. Let's change our view a little bit. I need to fill in where the current belt channel is. So we know that the part is 10 millimeters high. So I'll make a 10 millimeter high box and just kind of drag over this. I'll get it sized the way I want. Zoom in a little bit. Get that nudged up to the edge. Okay, that's that's lined up on the edge. I don't need to center align it. I wanted to line it up on the edge. And that's looking okay. Let's see what it looks like uh, over on this side. Are we going to group that yet? I don't know. No, I don't want to group it yet because I want to see if it's obscuring anything on the other side. And it looks like we're kind of filling in the channel for the screw head right here. So I need to make this a little smaller, nudge it over and then make it smaller. And I'm leaving it inset a little bit so that we'll have a, an alignment gap that we can line the other tool up in. Let's group these together so that it fills all of that in. There we go. Now we can use the part in red here. We'll turn that back into a hole so that it will cut. And we'll drag this in. And I want to line the opening up where it used to be with the new, with the new belt channel. And that looks about right, right there. Eh, I see a problem. Okay. Do you see what I'm talking about? This is going to cut through the part and we don't want it to cut through the part where the belt would be exposed out the bottom. That's not what we're after. So let's flip this and we'll nudge that back so that it lines up with the opening. Then we can nudge it in. I, I don't think that part's gonna matter where it's cutting right now because once we nudge that in, it'll clear that. So let's get that nudged in. Just use the arrow keys to nudge it. That looks about right. 
that's lined up where we want it to line up and it isn't cutting in to the channel or for the, uh, for the screw head. Okay, let's highlight these and group them together and that should do what we want. It, yeah, okay, undo. We need to make the cutter a little teeny bit taller. It's 10 centimeters now. Let's, oh, that was the wrong part. Let's get the cutter, there we go. And make that about 10.1 centimeters just to raise it up over the top of the other part so that we make sure it cuts all the way through. That looks better. Okay, let's highlight both of those. Yeah, that looks clear. Okay, highlight and group. And that is the effect that I'm looking for. So we've got that cable channel, not, not cable channel, we've got that belt channel moved over to this part. Okay, that's looking just about the way I want it to. I don't think there's anything else that I need to do to it. Let's rotate that around so that it's the right way up. And I think really the only thing left to do at this point is to export it out. We'll save that out as an STL. And then we can slice it and print it. All right, let's get into our slicer. We'll take the two STL files that are part of the design and drag them in. And the slicer likes to stack them, so let's use the arrange feature and get them separated from one another. I think I want them side by side instead of one behind the other. So let me move these around. There we go. And I'm printing this in uh, MG, MG Chemicals PETG Black. So I've got that preset and am I set? Yep, I'm set for my PETG settings for my nozzle. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and export that G-code. We'll take the name that it gives, that's fine. Just go over and click Save. And there we go. Next step, we'll go put this into Octoprint and start it printing. Okay, so as per usual, we will drag the G-code file into Octoprint and we'll wait just a moment for it to load up. Then we'll select it so that it's the next item to print. Now I wanna make sure that Octolapse is turned on because I want to do a time lapse on this print. So now it's on and we can monitor the start of the print. Bed's clear and that's starting up. So let me go ahead and get the time lapse and we'll take a look at that and then I'll be right back. As you can see, it's a really quick print. Well, let's go ahead and install it. We're gonna remove this screw. Go ahead and take that out with our driver. And we'll back the screw out of the belt. And we'll remove the zip ties that are holding the belt in the loop. With that done, we can install the part. We'll use the screw that we just removed it goes right there on the back of the carriage. And you don't screw it down all the way tight. Just screw it in as much as it was previously, which is really not but a couple of turns. And then like I showed you earlier, go ahead and get the belt put in. And it should go in very easily. With the belt in, we're gonna put a zip tie around the belt where it contacts the part. And that holds the belt teeth together so that the belt won't slide. We'll trim that zip tie off. And then we need to bundle up the extra belt on the end of that and we'll zip tie that down as well just to keep it neat and tidy. Now we can tighten the belt. And we do this by simply turning that screw and that pulls the two parts together applying tension to the belt. And that's nice and tight. Okay, we have successfully printed and installed an X-axis belt tensioner. You also got to see how to use Tinkercad to move part of one design into another. Links to my remix on Thingiverse are down in the description below. And now we're at the part of the video where I say things like like, subscribe, and share because those things really do help the channel. 
If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, leave a comment to let me know what you think. Now, before we close out completely, I want to shout out to Apocalypse Survivor. You know what you did. <laughs> and I thank you for it. That really made my day. All right, so if you haven't subscribed already, please do so by clicking the BB3D icon right over there. And ring the bell to get notified when I add new videos. Speaking of videos, here's one that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. All right, well, now that my X-axis belt is all tensed up, I'm going to go print something cool. You print something cool, too. See you next time.